Oscar Romero was a gifted communicator. His talent and bravery as a preacher would be his lasting legacy as a leader of the El Salvadorian church and witness to God's kingdom, as well as the cause of his martyrdom. His sermons were broadcast over radio and Radio YSAX was bombed in hopes of silencing him. But Romero would continue to preach until quite literally the very end when he was eventually assassinated on a day like today on March 24th, 1980, while wrapping up one last sermon in which he shared the good news of Jesus Christ and what it means for holy living today. We know that every effort to better society, especially when injustice and sin are so ingrained, is an effort that God blesses, that God wants, that God demands of us. Those would be fateful words, and yet they ring true today as much as they rang true back then. And they prick our hearts right here as much as they stir those hearts over there. Yes, there's a lot that we could say about why Monsignor Romero was killed that day, about what he was so moved to preach for and against the history of El Salvador, this troubled nation literally named after the divine savior through conquest and strife deserves careful study from all of us who profess the same faith in the same salvation, particularly in the global North. But today we want to focus on the person of Oscar Romero. This was a man of God practicing an ancient faith in the age of mass media, who many now regard as the patron saint of Christian communicators. This, after all, is a Lenten offering from Epiphany's Media and Communications Guild, and we cannot help but search for gleanings to nourish our own vocation before we wrap up this video series. We also can't help but notice the mysterious juxtaposition of this day with the next. Today is the feast of Oscar Romero, and tomorrow is the feast of the Annunciation, a very strange day in the church calendar where we remember Christmas in Lent, a mere days before we follow Jesus into Jerusalem in triumph, defeat, and ultimate glory. Romero also paid very close attention to the liturgical calendar when he prepared his sermons. He called these conjunctions of sacred and secular time the presences of Christ. Every day is an incarnation of the living God among us, and every time we make that claim is a feast of Annunciation. At Epiphany, we've adopted the Annunciation as the day, day one of year zero, so to speak, with the Archangel Gabriel as the church communicator, our patron saint of email blasts, worship bulletins, and YouTube live streams. We took on the Angel Gabriel's name and holy mission long before we fully understood the work that God was calling us to step into with this pandemic. Last year, we had planned to be commissioned and blessed as a guild with and by all of you, but our hopes were dashed as the coronavirus had other plans. Society teaches us to set our sights on a goal and to organize life around the achievement of that goal. In the same way that you might choose a point on a map and then plan a route to arrive there. But what happens if we take away the goal and put down the map and don't have a single point objective? What happens if we focus instead on the question of how to navigate? What if we follow a string of yeses instead of a line that points to one particular place? Now, one year later, we are beginning to realize that the Holy Spirit had been way, way ahead of us all along. What we thought we knew about the task of church communication was but a faint echo of God's true calling. We can't help but notice these connections because our ministry of church communication is very much a work of synergy, of working together, 
of combination and assemblage of braiding and weaving of bricolage, whatever metaphor works best for you. Epiphany's communication manager, Jad, likes to talk about what we do here as montage. Shot A plus shot B equals idea C. This comes out of classical film theory, which discovered that the very same image can have very different meanings when spliced into new contexts. But we don't need to care about cinema to notice that. As Christians, we have our own special word for this kind of relational reality, liturgy. We work together in synergy every time we come together in worship. Me plus you and you and you plus God. Those who study Romero's sermons notice a similar kind of splicing together going on in his preaching or what one scholar calls his diptych character. Romero was known to start his homilies with a section of church or national news. He sometimes called these sections the Gazette of the Life of Our Church or My Diary of This Week. World events presented simply as the reality that the word of God can and will illumine. He always focused on expositing the readings of the day, but unsurprisingly, it was his narration of weekly events that elicited the strongest reactions, both positive or negative. Preaching mattered to Oscar Romero. Not because that's just what you do as a priest on a Sunday morning, but because communication is fundamental to the very structure of existence. Can you imagine love without communication? That would be like planning a vacation out of town without first making maps, paving roads, or even inventing the wheel. It's unfathomable. Love is communication. And God is always communicating because God is love. So how and what we communicate matters a great deal to God. That is what we believe about our work as church communicators because that is what we've learned about God's love. It is always a conversation, a relationship, a synergy of message and messenger, sender and receiver, Holy Spirit and Holy Mother. That's the space we occupy as followers of Christ, seeking to share his story with our words and our images and our sounds. This ministry lives in that silence between the angel Gabriel declaring, because no word shall be impossible with God, and Mother Mary responding, be it done to me according to thy word. And in true form, Romero extends our multimedia metaphor even further. This work of ours, it isn't ours alone. He preaches, the best microphone of God is Christ. And the best microphone of Christ is the church. And you are the church. Each one of you from your place, from your own vocation, the religious, the married, the bishop, the priest, the kindergartner, the college student, the day laborer, the construction worker, the woman selling in the market. Each one of you, wherever you are, needs to live the life of faith fiercely because you are a true microphone of God, our Lord, in your context. Thus, the church will always have preaching. The church will always be a homily, even if we lack the happy opportunity that I have every Sunday of entering into communion with so many communities that during this week have made known to me their longing to hear again this radio station, which has become as basic as bread for our people. But on the day that the forces of evil deprive us of this wondrous means of communication that they have in abundance, and the church is reduced to nothing, know that they have done us no real harm. On the contrary, then even more will we be living microphones of the Lord declaring his word everywhere. As church communicators, we know that the medium itself is part of the message. 
for Oscar Romero, the microphone was an extension of the pastoral care and love he had for his nation. For us, it's YouTube and Zoom and Instagram, all these spaces we step into to extend the same seamless tapestry of care that is our shared vocation. But we all have our platforms in whatever context we find ourselves in. Mary humbly offered nothing more and nothing less than her own body and helped change the cosmos. May we strive to do the same. We do all this with love because God is love and because it's God's love that we try our very best to communicate. It is a blessing to gather with you here uh, to call attention to the reality of something new that has developed uh, since this pandemic began. At Epiphany, it was Jad's idea to begin a, a guild, a communication guild, uh, where people gathered uh, to think of ways in which we could reach out uh, into the world uh, using all sorts of manner of communications written and uh, multimedia uh, to uh, talk about God, to think about God, to engage uh, with one another in places where we aren't currently uh, to have an experience or hear the experience of the holy and the sacred. And then the pandemic set in upon us and suddenly we found ourselves in a new place, a new way of being in the world. It was this way, the Zoom way that we're all experiencing right now. And we asked ourselves, okay, so what is God calling us into? And, and Jad and you all begin to gather and think about how do we communicate and how do we engage beyond the walls? And what does that mean? Um, not just in the short term, but in the new reality of what God's doing in the world, the new reality of this age of the Holy Spirit, the new reality of church. And what that means is that we will have friends and followers and people to engage with uh, who we would ne never otherwise have engaged. Because people are now looking and thinking about how we relate to one another in new ways. And so this commissioning here uh, is the commissioning of the Communication Guild. It happens first and foremost to honor the reality of relationship. The relationship that God has called you to based on the skills and interests you have uh, and the providence of bringing you all together. And so the commissioning acknowledges that. And the commissioning acknowledges that the skills and gifts given to you preordained by God and called out through your interest and your hard work, those are a blessing. And so a commission recognizes a blessing as well. And third, it realizes and honors that while the commissioning uh, captures a moment in time, it also is something that puts us all on a trajectory or puts you all on a common trajectory, beginning first with listening to what the Holy Spirit is doing and secondly, acting on what the Holy Spirit is calling you into. At Epiphany, it is the Communication Guild, one of the, the sort of centerpieces of what you've done is this great work with Sanctus in creating a conversation about saints uh, between yourselves and out in the world at large. And for that, I just want to personally thank you for your time and effort in that regard. And so now it's okay. I'd like to call on the Holy Spirit. I'd like to call us to prayer as we join together fiber optically. We're not together incarnationally. If we were, we would all raise our hands in the air like this or grab out and hold one another's hands. But this is what we do know. And this is what we are knowing more and more is that our souls are connected. They're connected each to the other because of our, our desire and because of what God has done. And so our souls dance together, even as you and I just look at each other over Zoom. So let's Let's pray to God. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy, immortal one, we just, we give you thanks 
for the very unique and particular thing you are doing through the lives of these leaders, through Sabrina, Corey, and Kelly, and Lauren, and Brian, and Jack, and others you will call to join them, to be sanctified and blessed and commissioned in the work of what we're doing in the church now, reaching out and communicating in ways that are traditional, ways that are new, but always with our eyes and hearts on you, Lord. This is where you're leading us, and this is how you're leading us. And so today we sanctify, bless, honor, and uphold the work done, the community built, and the work that you're calling us into, that each of these leaders may have eyes to see and ears to hear and hearts to communicate with one another to share your divine purpose and your extraordinary power through the small things we do out into the great world you have made. So in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, we commission you for the work of the Epiphany Communication Guild. Amen. This is personal. We deserve protection and justice. This is a battle that none of us should have to fight, but we do. So I want to, I want to sing this song because I sing it at all of all of the actions and all of the ceremonies that I do for our women to remember, remember them and remember those that are, are missing. To pray for our future generations, the ones that aren't even here. And so I just want to close out with that song and we'll be done. Katsuya.